and bones. And this is why I recently I put a I put a video on my channel. Uh, it's on my blog as well. When Imam Muhammad Shah, Imam Shah Rawi was asked this question mm -hmm. about you know can the, can the are the deceased aware of those who are around them? And this is backed up by Imam Masood. You can read you, you can read in chapter 17 and chapter 31 in particular, um, where uh, and so, uh, where this talks about the deceased being aware of those who are washing them, mm -hmm. those who are carrying them, those who are praying over them, the deceased being aware of those who are visiting them. Mm -hmm. uh, in graveyards, but Imam Shaarawi, like he quotes the Hadith, and I read this as well when I was doing this tafsir. He quotes the Hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim, other 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 collections, the Sahih Hadith. And this happened after Bedr, where the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he stood over the dead bodies of of, of the Mushrikeen, the, the, the idol worshippers, mm -hmm. uh, at Bedr, and he called them out by name. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ya Shay, but he called them out. And he said, Inna wajadna ma wa haqqa. Right? So he said, We have found what our Lord promised us to be true. Have you found what your Lord promised you to be true? Right? And and then Omar radiallahu anhu says, like, are you calling them on them when when, when I know he says when them could could like you're calling on them and they've just become they're 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 just decaying corpses now. Mm -hmm. And then the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he corrects Omar and he, sa he says, he says, no, whom asma min? Uh, was it ma antum be ma antum be asma min whom? You know, you, you you don't hear any better than they do. They just don't answer. La istiyaunu ijaba. They just can't answer. That's the only difference. They they hear. You, you don't hear any better than they do. <laughs> and this is why when we're talking about orthodox theology. People need because and, and Imam Shaarawi in his tafsir he quotes that hadith a few times, but he but he quotes the hadith because some people get confused. I think, I think there's an ayah, I think the ayah is in Surah Fatir, and there's one more place in the Quran where Allah says, um, uh, "Wa ma bi and men fil kubur," right? That you cannot make those in their graves here, mm -hmm. right? But when you look at when you look at the context of that ayah. That's not talking about literally people in their graves. That 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 that's a law saying to you that you can't you can't speak to some you can't call to faith someone who is impervious to the truth, mm -hmm. someone who's just not going to listen, right? In the sense of like, like 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 preaching to certain people is like preaching to a dead person. There's no effect. Mm -hmm. That's what that verse is referring to. Mm -hmm. That verse is not saying that you go to the grave and people and, and people don't hear you. Mm -hmm. You don't understand that in, lit in the literal sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and, and then he quotes this hadith. So this hadith is Sahih isn't it? It's in the Muslim. No, when you when you go to the grave, and the other point, uh, the other point he raised in that video on the Shahrawi is he says that when we're commanded to the when, when when we go to the grave, what's the sunnah? When you go to the grave, you're supposed to say Salamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ahlul kubur. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're supposed to give salams to the people in the graves. Mm -hmm. If they can't hear us, then what are we doing? <laughs> right. Well, we're 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 being given a completely frivolous command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. And then you also have, and then and then you have to back that up with so many verses. Uh. Oh, sorry, not verses. I mean, ahadith and evidences mm -hmm. about, um, reciting the Quran for the deceased when you when you go to the graveyard, yeah. you know, oh. like bringing peace to them by reciting the Quran, mm -hmm. whether it's just a fatiha, mm -hmm. a fatiha, I feel yeah, seen and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. So it's it's very very clear that the deceased are aware mm -hmm. and they're alert. They're not they're not in some completely uh, inanimate state. Mm -hmm. You know they're they're aware of things. We are there. There's we're and we're kind of yeah. I guess we could say we're in we're in some sort of communication with them because they're aware of what we're doing. And this is what Imam Sufi lays out with so many different That's chapters right. of proofs. I mean one of the ones. Um, this is chapter 31. I think there's two chapters that people on this talk that really stand out. It's chapter 17, which says the deceased knowledge of those who are washing him and preparing him, and his hearing of what is said therein, mm. and to him while well, the funeral is passing by. And then chapter 31 says visiting the graves and the deceased seeing their visitors. Mm -hmm. 
right? The secret, mm-hmm. they're, they're aware of those visitors. And that's why there's, um, this is page 309. Um, and there's a beautiful, uh, I, think it's, I think it's in this chapter. I believe it's in this chapter. There's a beautiful story of, um, yeah, because he gives, he gives lots of different stories. Um, uh, yeah, so for, so for example, I'll, I'll read out an example for you. So uh, this is this number 982. So al is narrated on the authority of Abu Dardada, Hashim ibn Muhammad, who said, I heard a man from the people of knowledge saying that he would visit his father's grave, and then he stopped doing so. He said to himself, am I visiting earth? Then he was shown to me in in my sleep, and he said, my dear son, how come you do not do what you used to do? I said, am I visiting earth? He replied, you are not doing that, my dear son, for by Allah, you would look on me and my neighbors. You would look on me, and my neighbors would give me the good news that you were there. You would then depart, and I would see you until you had entered Kufa. Right, so this this is this is a man visiting his father's grave, and he thought, and he and he, so he says to himself, "Am, am I just visiting Earth?" Mm-hmm. That's what he thinks. Like, am I, am I just am I just visiting just an empty, you know, a, a lifeless plot? Mm-hmm. And then he goes home, and then his father appears to him in his dream and says, mm-hmm. "Why have you stopped? Mm-hmm. Why have you stopped visiting me?" And then he says, and then the son says, "Am I am I visiting Earth?" <laughs> he says this mm-hmm. to his dad in the dream, and the dad says, "You weren't doing that, son." When when you came, my neighbors, meaning me, not just me, but my the people in the grave mm-hmm. next to me, mm-hmm. they would tell me that you were there. They would say, "My son is there." And then, and then when you left, I would see you until you'd entered Kufa. Mm-hmm. And it comes on, on and then there's a, and then uh, the problem. My 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 favorite one in this whole book, which I which I thought was really touching. My favorite one was um was was a. Uh, a Silafi who said that I heard Abu Barakat, Abdul Wahid, Ibn Abdul Rahman, Ibn Ghalib, Asus in Alexandria, and he was saying, I heard my mother saying, right? So this is this is a man talking about his mm-hmm. mother, and his mother said, she she said, I saw my mother in my sleep mm-hmm. after her death. He said, I saw my mother in her sleep after her death, and she was saying, My dear daughter. When you come to me as a visitor, just sit by my grave for some time so that I can enjoy looking at you. Then ask Allah to have mercy on me. Because when you ask Allah to have mercy on me, it becomes like a barrier between me and you, and then it distracts me from you. Right? I mean, this is... (laughs) I mean, this, this, this is a, these are these, and there's so many of these beautiful stories at that mm. point. Because obviously, you 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 think that, but what you learn from that story is that you know, when you go to the grave and you say the person has sadaa when they come to life or a cat, mm-hmm. then all that mercy comes upon them, right. right? All that mercy comes upon them. So this mother says to her daughter in her sleep, "When you come, just don't say anything first. <laughs> I just want to look at you." I just want to look at you for some time, and then you can, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you can make a lot for me. And it's a, and it's a story after story after story in, in, in this chapter. It's, it's very very powerful stuff. So, Mashallah. what, um, what we, so what you, what you get from this, you, you, this this book, what I find so much when you look when you read these, these stories, it's just there's just so much hope. Mm-hmm. There's so much hope that that Imam Sufi gives when he, by, by giving you all these narrations. There's mm-hmm. so much hope that you. You don't feel that Mashallah. you're just completely cut off. Mm-hmm. That that's it. That you mm-hmm. know this, this 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 deceased relative of, this deceased relative of yours is now cut off from you forever. You're gonna or you're gonna have to wait mm-hmm. until uh, the next life to have any sort of connection with them. Mm-hmm. And it's just not just simply not the case. That's oh, simply yeah. not the case. You you can visit their graves. You can make the offer them. Mm-hmm. You can be grand for them. 